um, foundations curriculum. Uh, we cover a bunch of different topics. We do an introduction for Mind's Eye, kind of what we think of STEM education, a um, little bit of continuous learning and improvement, uh, variables, force, and motion, software programming, we cover individual sensors and servos. Uh, we do autonomous robotics, um, where we transfer those sensors and servos to a robot and do tasks you know, with the robot itself. Uh, a little bit of mechanical and structural engineering, and then we do a culminating project. Um, so basically, you know, we see it as an integration of the interdependent skills. So improvement of science and technology relies on our engineering and math skills. So the more you know about engineering and math, the more you can improve science and technology. Um, cover robotics hierarchy from simple machines, some autonomous robotics, autonomous robotics to drones. Um, so machines, manual operated stuff. Some autonomous would be like, uh, simple RC car, you have user input, but it does some calculation for you to steer it and drive it and things like that. Um, autonomous robotics, CNC arms, things like that, where it's autonomous, but it's limited programming wise. Uh, drones able to gather more information about its surroundings, working in an unstructured environment. <coughs> um, so good example, you know, alarm clock, this is a semi-autonomous robot. It has a processor in there, you can program it, it has inputs and outputs functions, but with limited ability, you have to do certain inputs to get it to do outputs. Um, Thomas Robotics is a welding arm, um, all the way up to like drones for like the Mars rovers and things like that, where they obviously have to work with no human intervention and in a very unstructured environment. A little bit about continuous learning improvement, uh, model for inquiry, uh, design and build a simple machine, histograms for visual data analysis, um, team dynamic stuff. A little bit about team dynamics, uh, silo thinking, things like that, where thinking your part of the robot is the most important part, but realistically, if everything's not working together, it doesn't function at all. Um, get into variables of force and motion. So this is one that we, we won't cover in great detail because for most part, it's simple math, things like that. Um, most of it's done in a science class. Anyway, we, we wanna show them how it works compared to the robot. Um, Talk about gear ratios, how to calculate gear ratios. Um, most people understand just basic normal gears, and then this is a beveled gear set, but it's still the same process for calculating gear ratios. Um, speed and torque. Uh, kids go through and do a couple exercises where they calculate the theoretical speed of the wheels, RPM-wise, um, and then how fast it should be traveling across the ground, and they'll hook up the voltmeter so that they can run the motor to certain RPM, certain percentage of throttle and measure the speed and measure how far it is off. If it's off, you know, it's because there's a certain percentage off from resistance, you know, stuff like that. Um, get into software programming, uh, do a breadboard. Uh, that's one of the things that we'll be doing today. Um, plugging in all the individual devices one at a time, building on those skills, get this working, then add something else. Get the two of them working, add something else. Um, that way, don't just throw it all on there and then figure out that, you know, after 10 minutes that one of the wires is plugged in backwards and that's why it's not working. A uh, little bit about programming. We do inputs, outputs, control structures. Um, with that, you can pretty much program any robot you want. Uh, so this is uh, one of the examples. We have a breadboard that we build up. Um, it's just a simple old display board that's available with the curriculums. Um, it's pre-programmed, pre-set up. It's got a little screen that cycles through some menus and it's a little interactive thing. Uh, it's just a, basically a functioning robot, but on a little display stand. So a little bit about syntax, um, the different parts of the codes, how the code works and things like that. Um, this is where most of our focus will be for the foundations is the actual programming itself. We use Arduino, which is a C++ based programming. Um, Almost every other language for programming other than basic was written in C++. So um, it's one of the better ones to know because it's been around for longer than any other ones and it's stayed relevant the whole time. Um, get into autonomous robotics, like you're saying, add, add all those electronics to the robot and do some tests, um, you know, stopping, stopping turning automatically, um, line following, things like that. Um, Cover the basic control structures, inputs from your transmitter, sensors, program commands, 
uh, control structures are how the robot decides what to do. So if it sees something, do this with the output. Um, and outputs, you know, motors, servos, actuators, lights. Um, anything that gives off energy is an output, um, whether it's a buzzer or a light. Um, just an example of we translate between code and sentences, and then between sentences and code. Um, it's pretty much just like teaching another language. The kids just have to learn how to read that other language. Um, autonomous obstacle avoidance uh, with the ping sensors. We use ultrasound sensors. Um, do some line following, uh, QTI sensors. Basically, they tell the intensity of light reflected off a surface. So um, do some design work, structural engineering stuff, um, leverage, cam, spans, torque, things like that. Uh, most of that we won't cover during this time. It's pretty simple stuff. Um, most of it's about fulcrums, things like that. Um, gaining mechanical advantage for whether you want to increase speed or increase torque, things like that. Um, some structural design stuff, um, shapes for bracing things, um, keeping things small and efficient. Uh, it's one of the general things the students like to build giant contraptions on top of their robots for claws that end up just tipping them over and things like that. So try to keep it small and simple. Um, simple always is the best solution, no matter what you're doing. Um, if you can do it with half the work, there's no reason to do twice as much the work. Um, and then the culminating project. So in our our area, we do a competition every year. Um, we've got a, a big course that we set up and we change every year, different themed tasks. Um, this year we're doing farming. Um, so the kids have to pick up and sort ping pong balls as different crops and things like that. And so they'll have an autonomous section where they have to navigate autonomously, do a manual task with the sorting. Um, they get basically bonus for being able to sort autonomously. And then an obstacle course that they go through at the end of it. Uh, like you say in Common Core Math, the Next Generation Science Standards alignment. Um, we didn't pick anything that was a stretch. So everything that's in there is something that we cover pretty, cover, you know, cover pretty well and it fits very well. Um, since it's not a science class or not a math class, we don't have to cover everything in every detail. So we didn't want to try to force anything in and have it not quite fit or have to go too far away from what we were doing to to make it work. Um, student performance development process, we split it into eight categories. Um, the first seven of them are inspired by Tony Wagner's book, um, The Global Achievement Gap. Uh, he went and interviewed like the Fortune 500 companies and asked them what skills they're looking for. Um, none of them were hard skills. None of them were being able to do anything physically. Um, that's easy. They, you can teach anybody to do anything. Um, what they were looking for is critical thinking, problem solving, you know, collaboration, you know, leading by example, things like that, uh, agility, adaptability, soft skills, interpersonal skills, things like that. Um, and then we added organization and housekeeping because we got thousands of parts. So the kids are responsible for making sure everything comes back at the end of the year. They've got sheets that are 11 by 17 sheets with one to one scale pictures of everything. They can set all the parts down. You can come by, sign it off. They can put it back in the bags and the boxes. Um, that way, you know, everything's there for the next year. Um, and we do it as, a, as an example, so one through four, do it as a, a one through four, so one sits on the bench, doesn't do any problem solving, lets everybody else do all the work. Uh, four takes initiative creates, you know, with creative solutions to problems, you know, looks for things and does a lot of work, does you know, the actual job. Um, so it's pretty easy to see this behavior in the class. Um, you know, and it's one of the things that we generally do it as kind of a, an interview process, you know, about halfway through and then at the end saying, hey, you know, pull one kid aside and say, you know, I've, I kind of noticed you aren't doing so much stuff. And, you know, so it gives them a chance to be able to see this and see what it takes to improve. Um, for me, this would have been huge in school to know what the difference between a D and a C and a B and an A was, you know, be able to read something that says this is the amount of work between these two. Um, it's, it's a massive thing so that they can see the improvement. Um, the students get a design journal that has a basically a simplified version of this. It doesn't have like the notes sections and stuff. It just tells them what the difference between each kind of grade is.